Hi guys, Anne McKinnell here, and today I'm going to give you a demonstration of Aurora HDR 2018. So this software has been getting a lot of talk lately because they are coming out with a Windows version. For the last couple of years this has been a Mac only product, so uh, now everybody is a chatter about this uh, Aurora HDR 2018 which is coming out in just a few days. Uh, now the people at McFun have reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to review their software, so I thought maybe this is a good time to finally give it a shot. Uh, I haven't really been doing HDR very much in the past couple of years because I've found that the sensors on the new cameras give me a really good dynamic range. So even when I take brackets, I often end up just using that middle bracket and, uh, you know, using the shadows and highlight sliders in Lightroom and uh, I'm finding that that works quite well most of the time. But there are sometimes scenes that have too big of a dynamic range to deal with and so you do end up having to do expo exposure blending. So let's see how it works in Aurora HDR 2018. Okay, so I have these images that I made in Yangshou, China, and you can see that uh, when I made this image there was quite thick clouds on the horizon, so the sun didn't peek through the clouds and make this beautiful display until it was up in the middle of the sky, so I have a bit of a bright spot in the middle of the sky, and the foreground is still really dark. So this is an excellent example of when the dynamic range of my camera wasn't enough and I really do have to blend exposures here. So uh, I tried when I got home to do this in Lightroom and I tried it in Photomatics and some other pieces of software and I just wasn't happy with the results. I really didn't like the way it turned out. So I think that this is going to be a good experiment for Aurora HDR. So let's take it into there and see how it does. I'm going to select these three images and go File, Export with Preset, and under Aurora HDR I'll open the original images. Okay, and I'll make sure alignment is checked and go Create HDR. So here it's opened and I will show you a few things about the interface before we get going. Um, the most important things are here in these two icons that are orange. This one here, the line with the three squares under it, turns the preset panel on and off. And you'll see the preset panel along the bottom. So I can turn that off and back on again. And the one next to it turns the side panel off and on again. Okay. So, there are a number of filters in here, sliders, many of them are very similar to what you might find in Lightroom, so that makes the software quite intuitive. There are also some things in here that are unique to Aurora HDR, and they're very, very cool. So let me just show you those first. So there's HDR Enhance. This um, kind of adjusts the HDR-ness of the image. Um, I'll just show you by changing that slider and you can see it's processing and then now it's showing. So you can see that it makes it a little bit kind of grainy and gritty. It depends on your own preference how much of this that you want. Um, I usually only just leave it up a little bit. Okay. Now we have, if you come down here, there are some that you're familiar with like saturation and vibrance. We have HDR structure and that is a lot like clarity. So if I move this up you'll see that it gets a little bit crispy. I don't usually use this one very much but the HDR microstructure is quite nice. I find that it brings out the, um, the edges of the details in the smaller things. So for example these little houses that are down here, if I increase the microstructure there'll be a little bit more details in those smaller areas. Image Radiance is one of my favorite parts of this program. It just brings out a kind of glowy, ethereal quality to the image. So I'm going to increase that, and you can see how it's just made everything glowy. Uh, one thing I do notice is that it tends to darken shadowy areas, so I'm going to also open up those shadows again when I use this slider. 
Okay, there's polarizing filter. There's another thing you don't find in Lightroom. That's very cool. You have HDR details boost. So again, I might use this to increase the details in some of those smaller areas. Uh, you have glow, which is similar to the radiance, but uh, just glow, I don't usually use that. Top and bottom tuning is very cool because I can go top and say, oh, maybe I want to reduce the exposure in the top and in the bottom, I want to increase the vibrance. So it makes it really easy to make those kinds of changes. So I think that that is about it for the specific HDR kinds of sliders in here. So I can use this eyeball icon up here to see the before and the after. And so the, that has made just a huge difference. And I quite like this image just the way it is. But I also want to show you um, some other things here. So um, notice that it has layers. And I've been doing this on the bottom layer. So as soon as I pick a preset, it's going to overwrite all of these. So if you want, you can, you can keep all of these changes and do your next thing on a new layer. Um, I think I'm just going to get rid of everything that I've done so far and, and start new by picking a preset. So you'll see a button here called Categories, and there are a number of categories of presets. So I'm just going to pick Realistic HDR. Because I do like my HDR images to retain their a realistic feel. So I'm just going to have a look through some of these. Realistic Balanced, Realistic Bright. And you'll notice that there is a slider right in here. So if I want, I can take that slider and move it down and I can see I can see how much of that particular preset I want to use. New emotions. That looks very nice. And vivid memories. I kind of like the glowy feel of that. But you know, I like the way new emotions looks on the foreground. So I think I'm going to choose that one to start with. Now a very cool thing about Aurora HDR is that it has these layers for you to work with and layer masks. So that means that I can use more than one preset. So I can apply this preset to my image like I have and then I can pick a different preset and apply it only to the sky using layer masks. So I'm going to do that because I would like to bring out some more of the details and colors in the sky. So I'll click this plus button here to add a new layer, add a new adjustment layer, and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it sky so that I remember what I was doing. And I'm going to switch preset categories and pick this other category here. And there's one in this package called Hollywood Look that I really like. Now it's really brought out a lot of color and detail in the sky, which I think is really quite cool. I don't like how it looks on the foreground though. So I think first of all, I am going to just reduce the amount of this preset altogether. So okay, maybe about 75, 70, there we go. That looks pretty good. And what I would like to do now is use the layer mask that's over here, this black area, and I'm going to use that to apply this preset only to the sky. So I can either use a brush and just paint it on where I want it to be, or I can use another tool like a gradient tool. And I'm going to do that because I want there to be a really smooth transition between the sky and the, and the foreground, especially where this mountain is here. So that's going to work out better if I use a gradient tool. So I'll go Tools, Gradient Mask, and now I can just click and drag to draw my mask. Okay, and I'll drag this up so that the mask isn't affecting the mountain. So that looks really good to me. Uh, I can use this eyeball icon over here on the layer panel to see the before and the after of what that looks like. And perfect. Okay, I'm going to click Done. And that applies the layer mask to the layer. Now one thing I've noticed is that um, the top left area has become really quite blue. Um, too blue, I think. So I would like to reduce some of the saturation there. So I'm going to add a new layer, 
new adjustment layer and I will call this one, um, I'll call this blue sky so I remember what I've done. And I'm going to go and look for saturation in here and maybe I'll just reduce the saturation until I get that blue to be a better color. And then again, I'm going to use the layer mask to apply that change only to that corner. So I'm going to make sure that I've got the brush, it's on paint, and the size is okay. I might increase the softness. You'll see the feather of my brush is changing there. And I'll reduce the opacity a bit so it's not a harsh adjustment. Let's go 50%. And now I'm just going to brush that change on to this part of the sky. So what I'm doing is applying that adjustment only to this portion of the sky. And you can see how it's making the layer mask over here. So I'll just keep doing this until I'm happy with how that's turned out. And again, I can use this eyeball icon to see the before and the after. I think I'm going to do it some more. I'm going to increase the opacity and just do it a little bit more. Okay, and I'll look at the before. Oh, there it is. There's the before. There's the after. So that looks a little bit more reasonable, I think. Now I noticed that there's some noise, so I think I would like to add some noise reduction. I'm again going to do that on a new layer. So I'll call this layer noise. And I'll go down to the HDRD noise and just add some denoise to the image. There we go, smooth things out. Very nice. And as a final step, I think I will add a vignette. So I'll go again, a new adjustment layer, and I'll call this vignette. And I'll go down to the bottom and just add a bit of a vignette around the edge. Okay. All right. So as a final step, I'm going to take a look at what the, all of these changes look like together by using this quick preview so I can click on this eyeball icon and show you before and after. And wow, what a massive difference. And you know, I really like the way that this has turned out in Aurora. It's much better than my attempts in Lightroom and Photomatics. Um, I think that I'm getting the realistic feel that I like and the power of the layers and the layer masks is something that I haven't seen in other software. So I'm really impressed with this uh, program and I think I'm going to be doing HDR a little bit more often again. So I'm really excited about that. If you want to try out this software for yourself, there are some links below in the description and I'm planning on doing more of these review kind of videos. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss the future ones. Thanks. See you next time.